This episode is sponsored by Aura. Browns fans, your online data and identity are way too precious to be left just hanging out there in the open for these data stealing thugs to come after it, take it and sell it to whoever they want. Scammers and spammers are just capitalizing on all of your data being sold. And I'm telling you right now, you don't even realize it because I didn't realize it. Head over to Aura, A-U-R-A dot com slash dogs, D-A-W-G-S. Get a 14 day free trial. This is what I did. Create your account and then you can run your data check, a free data check, and it will tell you how many data brokers are selling your information on the dark web and in different areas of the internet. And then Aura starts working immediately to remove your information from those places. I kept thinking I was good online. I was fine. I wasn't doing anything crazy with my information. I was being cautious while I was shopping online, all those things. And still, when I ran my check, I had 14 data brokers identified selling my information and or immediately started taking my name and all my information, my address, my email, my phone number, everything out of those places. I am so sick and tired of getting the spam emails, getting the spam text messages, the calls, and it's time to put all that crap to an end. So check out Aura, 14-day free trial, run your check, see what all the features they have to offer, like their VPN, their parental controls, everything that they have to protect your online identity. Aura.com slash dogs. Take back control of your identity today. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another solo podcast by myself. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, a lot of people seem to enjoy the first one, so I decided I'm off work today. Uh, instead of sitting around wasting my life away, rotting my brain playing video games, I would look up some Brown stuff and knock out a solo episode for you guys. So I'm sure Josh will appreciate it uh, because I was, I should be on like episode 40 of my solo episodes and this is my second one. Uh, but I appreciate you guys being here, uh, hanging out with me on a solo episode. It's I'm getting the hang of them maybe a little bit. Uh, so I appreciate you guys being here, supporting me. And I think I got a fun one lined up for you guys here today. Before I get into it though, just real quick, remember if you want to get your thoughts on the show, a full episode, or even one of my solo episodes, if there's something you want me to talk about or something I say that you want to get, maybe get your thoughts on the next solo episode I do, just head to the dogspodcast.com, tap, leave voicemail on that drop down menu, leave me an idea, leave me your thoughts. I'll play it here on the show. Uh, once Josh teaches me how to do that, uh, I think that could be really cool to have your guys' feedback on my solo episodes. Uh, if you want to find us on all the uh, major social media platforms, just search at the Dogs Podcast. Uh, we're on all of them, uh, why they're all still legal. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, please like and subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, help us get to 10,000 subscribers before the, the uh, football season starts. That's a huge goal of ours. It helps the show a ton. We appreciate everybody who has already subscribed and help us get over the 9K hump uh, just in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so uh, we're pushing towards 10,000. If you haven't yet, please do so. It helps us out a ton. And lastly, if you want more dogs content, uh, become a dog pack member by heading to jointhedogs.com. Become an official dog pack member. You get extra episode. You get to play fantasy football. Hang out with everybody from from all over the world that's a Browns fan. Uh, so that's jointhedogs.com if you want to become a dog pack member. So today, just want to take five, ten minutes to kind of address an issue it's really been a problem, I'd say, most of my life, but the, I've really noticed it as we've started doing a podcast and being more in tune with like the heartbeat of the fan base, uh, being more online. And I guess maybe the heartbeat of the, franchi- uh, the fan base isn't online. Maybe it's a very small minority um, of people and they're just the loudest. But it's just something that I think I think it's pretty well known that there's a segment of our fan base that can be very toxic um, it's, it's gotten even worse. I feel like in the last couple of years, it's, uh, since Baker Mayfield came onto the team and then left, there's just like a huge crowd of people that were very angry about him not being on the team anymore. And it seems like they're more Baker fans and they are Browns fans. And it's just, it seems like we can't ever be happy. And it's not just, you know, internet people that I'm talking to. It's literally my, I have family members that are the exact same way. Nothing the Browns do right now is right. Any move they make is that was stupid. They never don't know what, they don't know what they're doing. They never do the right thing. Uh, we signed Jameis Winston and I immediately get text messages from family members saying, what a joke. 
And I'm like, well, why is it a joke? Jameis Winston was good enough to be a backup quarterback for the Saints, who are considered a good fr- franchise in the NFL. So why is it a joke if then the Browns sign him? And Jameis Winston can play football in this league, so and he's a backup quarterback. And we signed him to be the backup, not a starter. So why is it a joke? And it's just, it just that's just one small example of the Browns do something that I think around the league is probably seen as a good move by the Browns, but for some reason to the, our own fan base, it's a joke. It's stupid. I, it doesn't make any sense. I feel like we're too latched on to what the team was most of our lives. But if we just look, even if we go back to 2017, you could see a start to turn the corner with bringing somebody like Jarvis in, uh, drafting a Miles, uh, drafting a Baker. I know Miles was before 2017. He was here for the rough patch. But uh, like you started to see us slowly turn a corner and kind of add some stability to the franchise. Jimmy Haslam seemed to kind of be learning from some of his mistakes, getting the right people in place. Um, I know early in his ownership tenure, he was very ch- quick triggered. Uh, it was, you got to win 12 games for me this year. You're fired. You know, Rob Chizinski lasted one season. Uh, but I feel like Jimmy's come a long way in terms of how he lets football people handle football things now. And sure, uh, he has his input and he gives his opinion, but it definitely seems like A.B., Stefanski, D. Podesta, like these are the guys that are coming together together to make decisions for the football team and it's paying off. And I know you guys, people like to complain and say, it's not paying off. What have we done? Well, if you look around the NFL, being a model of consistency and being considered a good franchise, isn't you don't win the Super Bowl every year. You don't win two playoff games every year. That's not realistic. The green Bay Packers have had two of the best quarterbacks of all time in my life. And they have two Super Bowls to show for it. I believe two. Yes. One by Brett Favre and uh, one by Aaron Rodgers. I'm per- I hope I'm not misremembering. Call me out if I am. Uh, the Ravens are considered one of the best franchises in all of football. They're just so consistent. They have one more playoff win than we do in the last four years. Okay? Nobody's out here just winning the Super Bowl every year. That, that's not a thing. The Patriots are not, you know, the 20-year dynasty of the Patriots is unheard of in most professional sports. Uh, and, and there's so much parity in the NFL that just doesn't happen. So to to gauge what is considered a good franchise, it's stability, it's having a good reputation, um, it's it's making good decisions that put the best product on the field, put you competitive. And, and so I went through and I was just kind of looking at some of the numbers of how the Browns stack up uh, league wide and inside the division a little bit. To, to kind of put things in perspective of you, like the Browns, we're not the Browns of old. Yeah, we haven't won a Super Bowl yet, and yes, that's the goal. That's the goal for every team, and only one team wins the Super Bowl at the end of the season. Uh, that doesn't mean that there was only one good team that year, okay? So since 2020, Kevin and Andrew Barry are 37-30, and 30, which is a 55% uh, win percentage. You're going, they're barely over 500. Some of the best coaches in football that you think are the best coaches are barely over 500. Kyle Shanahan just recently went over 500 for his career. This, like, the best coaches are hovering in the, the mid 500s to like low 60%, win 60% of their games. The average win percentage for NFL coaches since 1959 is 43.2%. Okay, so. To anyone who thinks that everyone is just out here winning 80% of their games, you're wrong. This isn't college football. You know, Nick Saban's not here winning 85% of his games. Ryan Day, 80% of his games. Like that, That's not a thing. There is so much parity in the NFL, and it's what makes the league exciting and great. And it's why you don't see outside of the Patriots, and maybe we're kind of getting to another Chiefs dynasty. We'll see. Uh, there aren't teams that just win eight Super Bowls. That, that's not, that, that doesn't happen because there's so much parity. There's so much movement with free agency. Um, I mean, the, the, like coaches only last typically a few years. The fact that Kevin Stefanski's four years in now and it, rumors are he's going to be getting an extension, that's stability. When was the last Browns coach to get an extension? I don't remember in my life if we've ever had a coach get an extension. So uh, also the Browns have finished fifth and seventh in the league in wins Two of the last four years, only Dallas, the Chiefs, and the Bills have more 11 win seasons than the Browns in the last four years uh, since AB and Kevin have come in. The other two years, they finished 19th and 20th. So, yes, it's slightly above 
or below the league average, you know, there's 16 or 16th would be, you know, right in the middle of the pack. So they're 19th and 20th. That's far from dumpster fire. Okay. That's, that's not Carolina. That's not uh, Chicago. That's not some of these dumpster fire teams. So even in their two down years, they're still hovering right there around the middle, just slightly below the middle. Okay. Very far from dumpster fire. We saw dumpster fire. That was one in 15, zero in 16. Uh, we have two playoff appearances and a playoff win. Uh, we hadn't had a playoff win, what, 20, 20 plus years uh, before their tenure. Now we've been there twice, won one game. And I know we got blown out this year. We caught a team that had a ton of young talent, a very good young quarterback on the road while we're playing with our a team full of backup practice squad players. The, f- the fact that we even made the playoffs with the team we had this year because of injuries is a huge reason why Kevin Stefanski won coach of the year again. Okay, so, I mean, speaking of that, he's been coach of the year 50% of the, the time, uh, years he's been a head coach in the NFL. That's pretty impressive. Um, and then just kind of focusing on A.B. a little bit, he's playing chess with the salary cap, guys. I, there's a reason why we gave Deshaun all this money and we didn't sweat it. We didn't think it was going to cripple the, the franchise. Everything I heard was it's going to set the franchise back 10 years. We're giving him all this money. We're never going to be able to sign anybody. The Browns have managed to keep our roster not only intact, We've added tons of talent through middle rounds in the draft, trading late picks to get guys like Zedarius Smith, uh, Amari Cooper, now Jerry Judy. All I heard was the Browns had one of the best rosters in football, uh, and all it's done is get better under Andrew Barry since signing Deshaun Watson to the guaranteed money. It hasn't inhibited what we've wanted to do with the roster in terms of adding talent or extending people or anything like that yet. And it's not going to because we have a rich owner who is willing to pony up cash, and we have a guy who's he's next level in terms of salary cap uh, manipulation and what he's able to do uh, to, to keep people on this team. So we have one of the best young, bright GMs in football, and you guys like to talk about his, his poor drafts. Yeah, he's added guys like Martin Emerson, JOK, um, uh, Dewan Jones late. I mean, he's added a ton of talent to this team. And then not to mention, like I said, Judy, Zadarius Smith, Amari Cooper, all for fifth round picks. Like we, we got to start being, we got to realize that it's not Super Bowl or bust every year. Yes, you want to go win a Super Bowl, but we have to focus on this regime. We can't hold the 2014 Browns against Andrew Barry, Kevin Stefanski, because they had nothing to do with that. Since they've been here, they've been, in terms of NFL, successful, okay? They've been a success. We've been a successful franchise since they've taken over. Uh, to put that in perspective, in our division, the Browns are 37-30 and 30 since 2020. They've won 55% of their games. The Steelers are 40-26-1. and one. About, they've won 61% of their games. I'm not exactly sure how to factor in the tie. The Ravens are 42-25. and 25. They've won 63% of their games. And the Bengals are 35, 30, and 1. Again, I didn't know how to work the tie for 54% of their, their games. The Ravens and the Steelers, two of the model teams you would want to uh, emulate if you're building a franchise in terms of success and sustained success. The Steelers have only won 61% of their game. They're only uh, six percentage points higher. They've, only, they've won three more games than us in the last four years. Okay, the, the Ravens, who just came off a great season. Everybody thought they were going to go to the Super Bowl. Uh, they were unbeatable. They've only won five more games than us in the last four years. What, an average of 1.25 games per year that they were winning more than us? Uh, and then if you look a little deeper in the division, the Browns are 12-12. and 12. They're 500 in the AFC North uh, since 2020. So everybody says you got to take care of business in the division. The Bengals are 9-15. and 15. The Ravens are 11-13 and 13 in the division. The Steelers are the only team with a better record than the Browns in the division. They are 16 and 8. They dominate the division since 2020. We're the only other team 500. The other two teams are below 500 in the division. The Ravens go and they beat up on all these other teams outside of the division that play Lamar once every couple of years and don't know how to prepare for him. In the division, 
They're a run of the mill team. They're eleven and thirteen. They're under five hundred. They have less wins than we do in the division in the last four years. And they have Lamar, a two time MVP. We've done it with injured Baker Mayfield, injured Jacoby Brissett, uh, PJ Walker, starting you know five quarterbacks this year. And we have a better division record than the Bengals and the Ravens since the year twenty twenty. So again, take a step back, breathe, and realize. The Browns have been successful the last four years. It maybe hasn't gotten to a Super Bowl, but we're getting there. It's not going to happen overnight. These guys didn't take over the best-run franchise in football, and all they had to do was just not crash it. No, we were on fire. We were literally a dumpster fire. We were the laughing stock of the league, and they've come in, and they've essentially turned it around and made us respectable overnight we went to the playoffs kevin stefanski's first year he won coach of the year his first year okay so you just we got to stop being so negative online about our team we want like who wants to play here if we can't even celebrate the fact that we've been one of the more successful better teams in the last four years it playoff success postseason ravens have only won one more playoff game than the browns in the last four years it was this year and it was supposed to be one of their best teams in 20 years they they won one playoff game uh, the Steelers have won no playoff games. In fact, we beat them in Pittsburgh uh, in the playoffs. And the Bengals, to their credit, they have five. So the Bengals have the lowest win percentage in the last four years, and they have the worst division record in the last four years. But they do have the most playoff wins in the last five years. Uh, they had the Super Bowl run and the AFC Championship run. So credit to the Bengals. Uh, they did have two years with some, you know, obviously they went to the Super Bowl, good postseason success. But you don't hear Bengals fans complain. What? So because the Bengals lost in a Super Bowl, they're so much better than the Browns. Again, I know I know that getting and winning a Super Bowl is the end game, but we, over the last four years, have been more consistent in our success. They've just reached a higher level of su- success in two of those years. We've consistently been better on a, you know, on the grand scheme of things in terms of overall record and division record. So I just want to take five, 10 minutes here. I don't know how long it was and just tell everybody who's constantly complaining about the Browns, every single move AB makes, you can't compare the moves AB is making to the moves that Ray Farmer was making. You can't make, you can't compare Kevin Stefanski and hold him to the Hugh Jackson standard. He, they had nothing to do with that Browns. This is a new Browns that they've been successful. They've sustained it now for four years. And it looks like if we can do it again this year, it will be heading into the fifth year of sustained success uh, in Cleveland. We haven't had this in my entire life. So why can't we enjoy it? Yes. There's going to be times where we get mad. We come out and, and we, we suck for a game. We lose a game. We should have. That's the NFL. Anybody, any given Sunday, anybody can be anybody, any given Sunday. We have to stop complaining about wins just because we didn't beat them the way we thought we should have. It's the NFL. Ugly winning is winning. Just win. Okay. So we, we got to keep a more open mind. We have to be more realistic with expectations and realize this isn't high school football. This isn't even college football. These are pros. These are the best of the best across the board at every single position in the entire world. And any given Sunday, anybody can be anybody. You, the worst team in football still is a team full of professional football players. So even if we come out and we struggle to beat a bad football team, we beat them. Okay, we took care of business and we beat them. We'll improve. We have to quit downplaying wins and underselling uh, or down, yeah, downplaying wins and overselling losses. Losses are going to happen. Nobody's gone undefeated since the 1972 Dolphins. Uh, so going into this season, just please keep in mind, it's a, it's a 17 game season. There's going to be ups and downs. We don't have to overreact to every single thing. We don't have to be going to the Super Bowl after one win, and we don't have to be fire the entire franchise after a bad loss. It's how you bounce back, how you keep a level head, how you make it through and navigate a 17-game season to put yourself in the best position to make a Super Bowl run come week 17. So I just want to jump on here and kind of go through some of that stuff. Maybe people don't know the numbers from the last four years since these guys have taken over. Uh, I feel like some people would be surprised at the division records to know that we're second in the division in terms of wins, win total, and win percentage uh, since these guys have taken over. Um, so we haven't been the laughing stock of the NFL since they've taken over. And we certainly haven't been the laughing stock of the division since uh, they've taken over. So again, I appreciate you guys being here, listening to my little bit of a rant here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. 
Uh, hopefully you guys have a great Easter. Hopefully you guys have a good, uh, good long weekend if you got one. Um, and I'll see you guys again on our next full episode sometime early next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Browns fans were in late March, early April, and that means tournament season is here. And you've heard me talk about the delicious steaks and chicken and burgers and all the meats from Omaha Steaks. But did you know they also have incredible appetizers that are ready in a flash? That's right. Omaha Steaks has everything from chicken wings to flatbread pizzas, pigs in a blanket, and more. They're going to be the new favorites of all your game day party spreads. Just head over to omahasteaks.com slash dogs and score big with 50% off site wide. That's half off all your favorites like the tender juicy steaks, big beefy burgers, and the delicious appetizers like I just mentioned. Plus, use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out and you'll get an extra $30 off your order. Omaha Steaks is making it as simple as a layup to step up your appetizer game this tournament season. Head over to omahasteaks.com, use promo code DOGS at checkout. That's 50% off site-wide plus that extra $30 off your order. Value has never tasted this good. Shop today, omahasteaks.com slash DOGS. Promo code DOGS when you check out $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required.